Okay, Jagma. So today we are going to start uh, part two of uh, chapter twenty. It is about uh, safety. We go. Uh, this chapter uh, discussion will be mainly comprises as the chapter is given in, in your uh, textbook. Okay. So it will be like uh, some rules and regulation or OSHA um, about uh, occupational safety and health administration. So allow me to say this. <coughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Rabbi shrach li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqtata min lisani yafqa qawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. To each one of you. So we are going to discuss chapter number 20 and this is part two of the previous uh, um, you know uh, about, uh, safety management uh, in the so I would suggest that uh, every student should watch uh, uh, part one and before uh, watching this one because part one is uh, uh, I would say is more interesting you know we discuss safety management uh, and practices uh, so that usually you know students they don't have uh, experience uh, what is happening on site or how is the uh, construction safety is important uh, so how it is risky you know? so to get that background uh, idea it, it's very necessary to uh, watch uh, part one of this chapter and then uh, because this chapter will be mainly comprising on uh, uh, rules and regulation so uh, they are going to take uh, some part uh, uh, from the osha standards so this will be more uh, theoretical you know so but uh, to, to make understanding so student must study the uh, part one okay let's move forward uh, with the uh, simple simple things uh, so <clears throat> Okay, federal legislation and regulation. So we are talking about OSHA. It is uh, in the context of USA, you know. So uh, in USA, they have occupational and safety administration. Uh, in short, they call OSHA. Uh, so OSHA regulations, uh, regulations, you know, they were developed uh, step by step. Like uh, in nineteen. Uh, <clears throat> 1910, they issued uh, general uh, standards, and then in 1926, uh, construction standards were uh, were issued. Okay, and then in 1969, there was a construction safety act uh, for implementation of these standards, and then in 1970, this uh, OSHA was uh, formed. You know, passed by the Congress uh, uh, of USA. So it's. Um, and this uh, OSHA was implemented by publishing a code, uh, they call it Code of Federal Regulations, uh, CFR 1926. Okay, so this was implemented. Uh, so now they have their offices at every uh, district and county level. And every business is monitored by, by OSHA inspectors, uh, whether it's the construction. And if you go to the website of uh, OSHA, so it is under the uh, labor department, you will find uh, that they have uh, safety rules and regulation for mining and for uh, uh, manufacturing and for agriculture and for there are separate rules and regulation for safe uh, construction safety okay for construction business so construction is more risky as we work outside uh, and the sun and the wind or you know uh, so uh, working at height um, and in confined spaces uh, so it's not a organized uh, business just like manufacturing industry is uh, um, you know you, you usually worker work inside the factory in an organized uh, environment but construction uh, you are going to start a project in desert so construction is more risky and if you go through the last uh, presentation you will understand that uh, how construction is a very risky uh, business so this move uh, let's move forward with the uh, uh, you know osha is uh, now um, occupational safety and health health administration in usa so we should also have same kind of uh, you know body because in every country uh, like uk or australia or developed country they all have uh, this kind of body with different names, but we can also have the same kind of body in Saudi Arabia or in Pakistan or in other uh, Muslim countries, developing countries. So, so OSHA Occupational Safety and Health Administration, they 
they are going to implement new uh, regulations, uh, enforce compliance with those regulations, and they gather statistics that uh, they keep record for uh, illness uh, and for accidents. Uh, uh, and if there is uh, any fatality or three person will get uh, admitted in the hospital, uh, so then that uh, accident must be reported to OSHA within eight hours. And then second uh, our organization that is uh, linked with OSHA is the National Institute for Occupational uh, and Health, NIOSH. Okay. This is the research arm of OSHA and they recommend uh, new regulations uh, uh, for uh, OSHA. Okay. So they also provide funding or uh, they develop uh, educational material for safety. Then third uh, uh, organization uh, under this act is uh, with OSHA is Occupational Safety and Health Review Commission. And this commission uh, is going to consider uh, appeals from the co contractors, uh, whether they are related to fine or they are related to abatement. Uh, they want to have a reduction in the uh, period of closure or something like this, you know. So people can make uh, appeal within 15 days uh, of those inspections to this uh, commission and uh, for a reduction in the fines. Okay, so now if uh, a person from OSHA is uh, going to visit the construction site or construction project, uh, so he should be referred to see the safety officer or safety manager uh, of the project site. And then he should have a, a conference uh, with the with the owner of that project uh, and with the manager of the uh, contractor. Then a representative from the from the owner side and a representative from the contractor side they can accompany with the uh, this uh, OSHA inspector uh, to visit the site and make a tour. You know? And they can discuss uh, in, in the conference that whether they have to visit the whole site or just a part of the site or just the OSHA inspector want to see a just particular uh, specific activity, uh, how it is being, uh, you know, um, safety related things are being uh, implemented in that uh, um, activity, maybe casting of concrete from, from, or something like this. You know. So the inspector during the visit can ask, uh, uh, discuss the things with the employees and the project manager or the safety manager of the project site uh, or his representative, they can also take photograph or make notes, uh, whatever the, is being discussed uh, during the um, tour. So correct noted problem immediately, maybe uh, this inspector will ask that uh, make these, these things, uh, correct these things related to safety, or he may going to impose some fine um, by, with uh, mentioning the citation, uh, like what is the violation uh, is going on of the OSHA rules and regulation. So then uh, employer, uh, they can have 15 days uh, to file uh, an appeal uh, uh, against that uh, uh, penalty that was imposed by the uh, inspector. So this is how uh, OSHA inspections are going to be held uh, on uh, any construction site. Now we are, now we are going to present uh, 10, uh, you know, most cited uh, uh, like violation or uh, reported uh, standards. Uh, according to 2015 data, these uh, at 10 areas uh, were categorized as uh, risky, you know, on the second side. Like first one is fall protection, and there should be a fall protection for the labor. So there is a lot of, uh, it's ranked at number one, with, uh, like most uh, citation occur that uh, contractor were not able to have uh, proper fall protection for the labor force. And second is uh, they are not communicating hazard. Um, hazard communication is a problem on the construction site. And scaffolding is not proper or weak or, you know, and so there are um, problems in the scaffolding. And the other citation is the respiratory uh, protection. And if there is a lockout or tag out, like uh, if OSHA inspector is going to stop the work, uh, they are going to lock the site. So do not operate. So then uh, contractor, they are going to do violation or something. 
So then there are powered uh, industrial uh, trucks. Uh, this is also accident happened with the, the uh, trucks. Uh, ladders, many people fall down from those ladders. People are using short ladders, uh, you know, damage, uh, faulty ladders, uh, damaged uh, ladders. So um, ladder is also uh, an issue on a construction site uh, and worker have to go up and down uh, while doing their work uh, while casting concrete on boards or something, fixing the farm work. Uh, so then there is the electrical and electrical methods. So this is also a problem and then uh, machines, okay. Machine guarding, so people get injured uh, due to uh, interaction with those uh, uh, construction machinery. And last is uh, uh, about electrical and electrical requirements, like in the wiring or electrical connections. Uh, uh, so uh, pockets, uh, uh, like the sparking uh, area, or wires are tear off. Uh, so um, there is a uh, electrocution or uh, short, uh, short circuits. So this is uh, also like number 10. Uh, so we discuss uh, 10 areas that are uh, that have been cited uh, mostly uh, according to 2015 that uh, these uh, usually these remain the same. You know, there is a little uh, difference in every year. Uh, so only fall protection hazards, scaffolding, you know, these uh, ladders uh, and electrical work. Uh, so always they have, these are the problem areas uh, on any construction site. So let's see, as you know, uh, there is a safety record given according to OSHA. There are six methods, uh, of, uh, six ways of reporting uh, illness and injuries on construction sites. First one is uh, that uh, every construction site they must have a first aid log and they should uh, maintain uh, that uh, kept on site how many uh, persons were given the treatment, uh, how many persons were given the uh, basic uh, first aid treatment uh, on the construction site like the bandage or something, you know, and then there was an uh, uh, injured worker, uh, they have to be transported to the hospital. And so this first aid person, they should be having like uh, uh, just the uh, rain transportation and have telephone numbers uh, where to send uh, the, the injured person to the hospital. So, so second is a first injury, first report of injury log first report of injury log. So this is a required, uh, you know, uh, if you like to come OSHA side, this is a compulsory that uh, there should be a first report of injury. Okay. And uh, this is also required for a uh, worker compensation law or if those uh, labor, uh, the workforce uh, injured worker, uh, they need to get medical treatment from a hospital. A third uh, reporting level is uh, a supervisor's accident investigation report. So for each recordable accident and how it could be prevented in, in future. So this could be a, a supervisor's accident investigation report, detailed report why this accident has happened, what was the reason, how it could have been prevented and how it should be prevented in future. Then fourth uh, um, uh, reporting level uh, is uh, a project accident report. Okay. So this is monthly uh, uh, disabling injuries or lost work, lost time, uh, uh, lost uh, work, the injuries. Uh, uh, to, and this report is maintained and usually sent uh, to the headquarter or uh, to the uh, home office or main office uh, of the companies. Okay. And this should be maintained at the project site. Uh, and OSHA um, people, when they come and they can also watch this, uh, uh, see this report, project accident report. Then fifth is uh, OSHA required injury report. Okay, so uh, OSHA, they have a special, uh, uh, you know, OSHA 300 form. They name it the OSHA 300 form. We will present and show this form in the next slides. So um, every, uh, you know, disabling injury, uh, should be reported uh, to OSHA by filling this form. Okay, and this form should be maintained on the uh, job site. Uh, number six uh, is uh, 
fatality or major accident report. This is just like if anybody or one person died on site or more, or uh, three or more people, uh, you know, workers, uh, they got injured and they need to be admitted uh, in the hospital. You know? So any fatality or accident that hospitalizes three or more uh, employees must be reported to OSHA within eight hours. So if there is this injury, uh, fatality, sorry, fatality, like one fatality, any fatality, or three uh, employees or three workers, they got injured and they need to be admitted, uh, um, you know, they need to get the hospitalization. So there, that kind of accident must be reported to OSHA within eight hours. So it's mean on the same day, usually, you know, this should happen. And in case of fatality, usually um, people from OSHA, they are going to visit the site also. So these are like uh, safety record keeping, uh, how it is uh, maintained uh, in, in USA according by following the uh, <laughs> Occupational Safety and health, health, health Administration rules and regulations. So we can also, you know, this is like we are going to study as a case study. So we can also follow these uh, principles uh, to, for maintaining uh, or implementing safety management system on our construction sites. So we should also have uh, uh, safety record keeping. Okay, let's see. So this is the like the first uh, report of injury must be maintained and available for review when a, when an OSHA officer is going to inspect the site. Okay, and this record should be preserved for uh, five years. Okay, and this is uh, also used for to get worker compensation and uh, when person is uh, injured or uh, got illness at the work. Uh, uh, work site, uh, so he should be given the um, uh, you know hospitalization. And then there is this is the safety record, typical project accident report. You know we, that is being sent uh, monthly. Uh, so it um, include every number of employees, uh, and then total hours worked by all the employees on the site uh, in a month. Uh, Number of temporary disabling injuries, temporary disabling, uh, permanent uh, disabling injuries, and number of deaths. Okay. So total disabling injuries for this month. Okay. Yeah, or this should have number four, number of days lost as a result of uh, temporary disabling injuries, or number of days lost uh, mm, like people are away from work due to permanent uh, disabling injuries or or due to uh, death has happened, a total days lost uh, attribute, uh, attributable to this uh, month. Okay, so this is like the project accident report. Uh, it must be prepared uh, on monthly basis. Okay, this is like uh, the OSHA 300 form that uh, really safety inspectors or safety officer they know how to fill it. So they have to just um, put the into the data and take more what has happened, you know, uh, so work-related injuries and illness. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so this is also like a, a first report of uh, injury. It must be maintained uh, and available for review when any OSHA inspector is going to visit the site. So this form should be available uh, and the OSHA, that inspector can ask uh, in this form because this is a standard form that uh, OSHA has issued us uh, to be filled by by every uh, accident or incident. Now, now, now next we are going to discuss uh, safety programs. According to OSHA, they say that a good safety program should comprise on safety training of all the workers. Okay, so everybody whoever going to enter on a construction site, he must get a safety training, whether it's a orientation training or a job specific training or a refresher training. So they, they have to get this training. And usually, you know, in, in Hong Kong or in Australia, they, in Hong Kong, they give you a green card, you know, so like a, a small card who have completed this training. Okay. And this card shows uh, when, how many days training they got and uh, what is the expiry date of this uh, training. So then um, second is a regular inspection for safety hazards. So there should be regular inspection for safety hazards by the safety uh, you know, engineers. 
and they should note uh, what how the those hazards should be monitored uh, and uh, inspected and uh, how they have to make uh, mitigation for those uh, hazards regular briefing to increase safety awareness at all levels so there should be a regular briefing uh, related to safety awareness uh, for the workers uh, for the for supervisors for uh, and other staff uh, so there should be a safety a brief briefing and it could be like in the written form they can distribute some pamphlet some have some uh, safety week uh, so or um, on a regular uh, uh, weekly meetings uh, they distribute uh, these kind of safety related material to their workforce uh, how to work uh, safely so people should get uh, you know job specific uh, uh, awareness uh, about their job then there should be a written program and documentation for all safety activities okay so that uh, there should be implementation of safety management system and uh, all the standard operating procedures uh, so how to do work in a safe way um, so every activity in, in should be in in writing uh, uh, in the safety management system there should be like in uh, in written form that how to do this activity in a safe way like casting a concrete for column or casting a concrete for for beam or slab you know so this is a uh, how to work for foundation how to work working at height how to work uh, like inside the water so this uh, these safety uh, standard operating procedure should be followed if worker supervisor neglect safety rules and regulation warning should be considered you no know, because now uh, in usa usually whenever a worker is going to join the company so they are going to give them a, a, like a, a job briefing sheet okay? and uh, the worker need to read this uh, carefully and get familiar whatever is written in this uh, job briefing sheet and he need to sign it okay i need to sign and submit uh, to the safety officer or the representative uh, at the project site uh, that uh, to make uh, like they have read uh, and understand uh, these safety rules and regulation which uh, he need to comply all the times whenever he is on at the construction site so now uh, in the next figure like uh, 20.6 uh, they are going to present this uh, uh, job briefing sheet so we will read uh, you know uh, just i have scanned those uh, pages uh, from the book uh, and we will read those uh, what is uh, written inside that job uh, uh, briefing uh, sheet so to uh, just to understand because uh, um, going to that uh, briefing sheet uh, some photograph just uh, like this is the cutting hazards you know uh, so this is a wrong way of cutting you know uh, a saw can can less irritate the um, leg of the person okay? and this is a, even some students there when i talk with the, so the students because usually they study the you know uh, in arabic language so they even don't know what is mean by tower crane so this is like the, the tower crane we use it for material handling at the construction site and this is like a, a x question mm -hmm. so is uh, barricaded properly x question so that people should not go inside the x question okay so there is work uh, example of working at height uh, and then there is a personal protective equipment uh, we have discussed this uh, in detail like safety uh, helmet uh, safety glasses uh, mask uh, uh, safety vest safety gloves safety shoes uh, so this uh, uh, like the uh, you know photograph of the safety shoes really there is a steel plate here so whenever a uh, something fall down at the foot uh, so then um, toe or fingers are not going to get damaged you know and from the bottom also his nail penetration uh, is not possible and then material handling with the crane so this is like a wrong person is standing under the that uh, steel plate you know so person should always stand up from that uh, whenever a material is lifted uh, by any crane so with this uh, background we will move uh, to that uh, um, uh, rules and job briefing working sheet so this uh, job briefing work, work uh, sheet uh, that uh, 
a worker need to sign, read and sign and give like he understand all the things uh, about. So we are going to read a couple of things uh, on this uh, job briefing sheet. Employment, like project manager or his uh, uh, duly authorized representative will do all the hiring on the job. Identification, employee shall wear a company badge or, at all times in full view. So these uh, uh, you know, workers, they have to wear a company badge. Hours uh, of work. So usually people, those workers, they need to work uh, from, uh, in USA, they work from uh, five days, uh, Monday to Friday, yes, and two days of holiday. But in Saudi Arabia, usually they, they work from uh, Sunday to uh, Thursday. Okay? And sometimes Saturday is also working day for the construction worker on the side. So these uh, workers, uh, uh, they should follow the you know uh, um, time uh, when they have to start the work in the morning and when they have to go home. So they should follow the uh, working time. So, so next uh, they have put uh, employment. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, next next point is checking in and out. Okay. So when these employees are worker, they they need to you know check in and out. Uh, by quitting time, so they have to, you know, uh, swap that uh, card uh, as, uh, as a timekeeper. Um, so, uh, employees are trying to leave the project during regular working hours. Must check out with the timekeeper if somebody want to leave early. So he need to check uh, with the timekeeper that he want to go early today. You know, so the really worker they need to be uh, on site. Uh, from morning until the quitting time. Issues, care, and use of tools. Okay. Certain uh, company tools will be issued uh, to those uh, workers. Uh, four men are workers. They, need, they should maintain those uh, uh, tools properly and they should not damage them. So because they are issued on their name and uh, in USA, they, so they are going to keep regard. Any loss or damage to those tools may be recovered from the uh, employees. You know? so, uh, then uh, it means the uh, employee, they need to use uh, those uh, uh, tools uh, uh, carefully. Huh? A day's work. Each employee on the job is expected to perform full day work. Uh, your willingness and cooperation and right attitude will, uh, will go a long way in accomplishing this uh, objective. Okay? Conduct on the job. So conduct on the job, we are going to list a couple of points uh, that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, that um, everybody working on the site, uh, they should uh, have a good conduct uh, and uh, otherwise there could be a disciplinary, appropriate disciplinary action or a discharge, like they can, they may terminate, you know, if you don't follow these uh, uh, rules and regulation, what they are going to present next is uh, like, what are the rules? There should not be theft. Okay. No one should steal any company property or anything from the construction site. Okay. So, there people tired, uh, you know, they should not uh, recurring tiredness. They should not work when they are uh, have a fatigue or you know long working like in two days they have not slept uh, uh, have proper sleep and they are working so they are like uh, become dangerous for other people leaving company premises without a proper authorization so if uh, somebody is leaving the uh, worker is leaving the company uh, without authorization so they may get a punishment you know or termination Possession or use of intoxicant, uh, narcotics, or alcohol, etc. So this is the, all these things are prohibited at the construction site. So it's uh, very important, you know, that uh, when a person uh, becomes senseless, uh, he is like a bum for other people, you know. So we need to maintain a safety culture on a construction site. Willful damage to company material, tools, and equipment. So no one should damage the company. Um, Material or tools or the equipment. Okay. So no one throw any any stone or anything uh, engaging in horseplay like shouting uh, to the uh, passerby people passing near the construction site there and and the work uh, you know they are working on the project side they are going to shout you know to the uh, uh, making some noise or, or calling bad words you know so this is all. Uh, 
uh, uh, we get a punishment or, or a, you know, uh, like they may be destroyed or um, kicked out from the construction site. Insubordination should not happen, so people should respect their uh, seniors. Gambling is not permitted. Uh, fighting on company premises is not allowed. Uh, sleeping on the job is not good. Uh, so failure to observe established safety rules and regulation. Okay, so everybody should uh, uh, follow the safety rules and regulation. Next is uh, uh, housekeeping. Okay, so so like a person uh, should be you know maintaining the uh, housekeeping. Uh, like they should keep clean uh, stairways, walkway, or change room uh, should be kept uh, or washroom all the time clean. You know? So no one may uh, uh, these things that you know housekeeping even for uh, other people for everybody is very important. Sometime uh, I would say that uh, how to make uh, you know let's say example take example of a faculty member. You know if a faculty member is uh, good in housekeeping, so his office will be very clean. You know very clean and uh, the paper whatever they they are going to receive, so they will put in the file so proper filing and uh, and table is always clear. You know but some uh, faculty member they they are not good in housekeeping, so their office is uh, like a messy, you know, with files and papers, uh, and many bulk uh, papers are put uh, uh, on their table. So, to find any uh, specific paper, then they are looking here, here, and there, you know. So, this is not good. And even for uh, for the students, also, when they live in their hostel, so a student uh, good in housekeeping means that his house, uh, his room will be clean. He will keep his clothes, uh, shoes, socks, uh, everything in proper order, you know, and study table. Uh, so, but uh, if a person is not good in housekeeping, so his uh, room will be dirty and his uh, like a, a bed or whatever, you know, socks, shoes uh, here and there, you know, room is look like messy. So I would say that uh, people who are not good in housekeeping, they will not become a uh, you know, boss in future. You know? So everybody need to pay attention that they must be good in housekeeping and keep the site uh, you know, free from nails uh, or um, debris or uh, uh, you know, um, lumber. Uh, so uh, side should be neat and clean, you know, and in order, you know, where where to park the equipment. Uh, so uh, it's very important, you know, to pay attention uh, to uh, housekeeping. So next, they put safety rules. Establish safety rules and regulation will be observed and followed by all employees in the best interest of accident-free operations. Okay. Uh, so all unsafe working conditions should be reported to your immediate foreman who is uh, in turn report to the company safety engineers. Okay. All employees will be required to wear proper clothing and on the work site. Uh, hard hats must be wear, okay? So they should keep uh, the helmet. Pay period, usually, you know, in US, the Friday is the pay period, like the end of the weekend. But, uh, so labor uh, is being paid weekly, you know, in, in US and in, in Pakistan or in Saudi Arabia in Middle East, uh, you know, because uh, Friday and Saturday is holiday, so pay period should be Thursday you know, for the labor force. So first aid, uh, use a first aid facility. So there should be a first aid uh, facility. Uh, and if something happened to anybody, so they should be, can uh, first aid person can, should be able to give some bandage and he should have some connections, uh, phone numbers uh, and transfer those uh, injured person to the hospital. So, so um, sanitary facilities. Okay, so, Sanitary facilities, uh, adequate sanitary facilities are provided on the job site and are to be used by all the employees. We request your cooperation in maintaining these facilities in a clean and orderly condition. So workers should uh, keep uh, clean these uh, sanitary facilities. So raincoat and uh, boots, so raincoat uh, and uh, like long boots uh, should be available uh, to the 
provided to the employees uh, during the working hours if they need to work uh, in, in in the rain. Uh, remaining in work areas, each employee must remain at the job site and at his work location at all times during regular working hours unless authorized to leave by his supervisor. Okay. So absenteeism, so unauthorized absenteeism is not allowed. So maybe people will get a termination, you know, if they, they are in the habit of to be absent. Okay. So lastly, this, uh, you know, that the, each worker, uh, they should agree with these rules and regulation and they should uh, sign it and return it to the, um, you know, uh, safety officer or the uh, supervisors, you know. So this should be kept in his file, you know. Uh, these uh, uh, job site briefing uh, uh, rules and regulations. So with this, we will move forward. Next, we are going to discuss uh, like from the OSHA standards. So OSHA standards, they are very in detail, you know. Uh, they comprise on subpart A, subpart B, subpart C, uh, to subpart uh, uh, X or subpart Y and subpart Z. Yeah. So they are very long. So here, uh, some points they put uh, are going to present, you know, in in the book, uh, in your textbook. Uh, so safety rules and regulations should be available in handout or posted at the job site. Some of them are shown in figures. So in the next figure, uh, these rules so we are going to read again uh, from whatever is given in your uh, textbook. So, but. Um, they say that uh, these uh, safety rules and regulations, usually, you know, the projects, uh, they implement these uh, safety rules and regulations in a booklet form and they give to each worker whenever they join okay, so that uh, he can read uh, the, those uh, safety rules and regulations with him. So what is uh, here, uh, just uh, because uh, in the rules, uh, we will read about uh, slips, uh, trips and falls. Okay? So let's understand there is a slippery place like on the right side, this figure shows the slippery, some oil is, uh, you know, spilt on the surface. So be careful uh, from the slippery place or if from slippery people can slip, you know, so and they can fall down, you know, they can have get injury okay, by slipping. So it's, uh, it's always good to walk carefully by looking on the ground, you know, where you are going to put your feet. Or there is a, you know, when some people, they don't look uh, at their feet, uh, so they, some, they are struck with the, some trips, uh, some, uh, you know, like um, something is a uh, uh, little bit uh, edgy uh, above the ground, so people, um, their, your feet are going to struck with that hurdle, and people are going to fall, you know, so these, we call it trips. Uh, and you know, falls uh, like uh, falling from height, you know, maybe from ladder or from any any height. Okay. So let's see, as a, um, and there is also like uh, this is lumber is on site, so there is a pro um, projecting nails. Okay, so these nails uh, should be bent uh, or hammered by hammer. And then there is a blow is a scaffolding is shown. So this all uh, pipe network uh, platform for casting of deck slab for the bridge uh, or uh, box uh, girder. So it's uh, uh, like in situ casting, uh, we have this uh, scaffolding. You know? And then the, the top is they have, they have shown again a scaffolding and there is the guard rail. So we call these uh, horizontal, these uh, guard rails, middle rail and upper rail. So upper rail should be smooth. Uh, and then there is a tow board. Tow board is this edge of this working platform should be a little bit high, you know. So when workers standing, uh, they are, you know, maybe doing the, uh, brick work or a block work. So when they are standing, so when their feet is going to touch to this tow board, because it's a, it, then they know that they are their feet is at the edge of the platform. So this uh, working platform, they have a ladder to go up. Okay, so uh, and there is a cross bracing uh, also uh, that uh, this uh, platform should be strong enough. You know. And at the bottom is the base plate, base plate that it should not penetrate in the soil. So let's see, is, uh, again, there are some more uh, photographs just to understand what we are going to study next. So 
a scaffold like this is a working platform. They have uh, a guard rail at the top and then middle grade uh, rail and usually height is 35 to 37 inches height, you know. So there is a cross bracing uh, also. There is a sill at this uh, wooden plate at the bottom. It should not penetrate in the soil. And same here, they have shown a tow board that uh, is a platform where worker has to stand. So it's a little bit high, you know, from the edges. And then um, these are uh, guard rails, uh, middle rail and top rail. So these are guard rails, uh, spare guard rails. Okay. Uh, so guard, top guard rail and then middle rail and then two board. Okay, so I hope everybody understand this. Uh, from this diagram, we will read inshallah whatever is given in those. Uh, so they have copied here uh, some rules and regulation, and small, small things from the OSHA standards, uh, just uh, a few, you know. But uh, for detail, you need to go to the OSHA website and read the OSHA standards. We will, inshallah, offer a separate course on uh, safety and construction. In that, we will cover all these things uh, uh, in PowerPoint, you know, in a nice way. But here is uh, just one chapter in this course. So um, I'm just going to put uh, uh, just uh, like the scan copy of the page of the book. You know? uh, so it's, uh, let's see, it's the overhead hazards. So all imply they should wear hard hats or helmet uh, to avoid any uh, overhead hazards to any bar stuck to the head uh, falling hazards okay every hole or opening in the floor of uh, platform they should have uh, proper guarded uh, with, with barriers uh, just like we have presented in the previous uh, presentation that uh, any block out uh, or falling hazards uh, we need to uh, especially guarded with the barriers or uh, put some net around. Slipping hazards, uh, so it's, uh, it's from slippery spaces, scaffold, platform, or other elevated working surfaces covered with ice, snow, grease, or other substances causing slippery footing shall be removed, turned, uh, or then sanded. Sand, so avoid slippery. So to ensure safe footing. Okay. Then tripping, uh, tripping as we have also seen before, just before a uh, picture. Areas where employees must work shall kept reasonably free from accumulation of dirt, debris, scattered tools, materials, sharp projections. So usually people when they walk, yeah, so they don't look uh, at the ground there. Then due to those sharp projections, their feet is going to struck with those and they are going to have a tripping hazard. So projecting, sorry, projecting, projecting nails. So all those, as we have seen in the previous figure, so all those projecting nails, they should be hammered or bent or they may be removed. Okay, so the side should be neat and clean and there should not be uh, those uh, kind of lumber uh, pieces or projecting nails in those uh, lumber. Riding uh, uh, for hosting equipment. Okay. No employee shall ride uh, on or in the load bucket, sling, platform, ball, or hook. So see there is something, you know, they would have, we have seen that uh, there is a backhoe and uh, people sometimes sit in the bucket of the backhoe, you know. So, uh, for transporting labor or workforce, we should use the proper lorries or trucks uh, that that are just for transporting the passengers. You know, so the passengers should not be transported by by sitting in any bucket of any uh, equipment. So number seven, let's see, the number seven here is the uh, what is lumber and nails. Okay. A lumber used uh, for temporary structure must be sawn. So whatever the wood we are going to use, that should be must be uh, you know strong enough, uh, and it should be proper length and size, and they, they should not be like cantilever, uh, you know. So uh, nail uh, nails uh, shall be driven full length. 
in the in those the wood pieces there uh, and able to make uh, uh, you know um, for scaffolding so nail should be driven for the to the full length of the wood you know not just like a very short nail used and when there is a load so then they will uh, you know open so next is a guard rails or a safety rails we have seen before that there should be a two guard rail and a mid rail and height should be 35 to 37 inches uh, so uh, other material construction may be used uh, uh, given safety okay so the this uh, uh, handrails uh, uh, shall be smooth and free from splinters or uh, protruding nails. So the top uh, guard rail should be smooth uh, and then it should not have any, any you know, protruding nails or uh, that the hand will get uh, you know, injured. Toe boards. So we have seen the toe boards. Uh, so this way, toe board, they shall uh, extend four inches above the platform okay, so that uh, your toe can uh, feel that this is the edge of the working platform. So we should use uh, eye protection like uh, goggles and uh, glasses. Uh, uh, whenever they are working, uh, cutting, uh, and, you know, uh, or chipping, drilling, cleaning, uh, grinding, uh, polishing, okay, or cutting of wood necessary. So we should use this. Uh, uh, that falling particle, uh, flying particle should not penetrate in your eye. You know? So it's especially important if they are doing the welding job or grinding, uh, uh, <clears throat> or if they have uh, like cutting the wood also. Uh, so um, with the mechanical saw, uh, we should uh, protect the eyes of the workers and they should be using the uh, uh, goggles. Okay, protective apparel. So the uh, raincoat uh, or maybe waterproof boots uh, may be provided when people uh, um, are waterproofing clothing may be given uh, when they have to work in the rain. So it is. Uh, so before going to the next sheet, uh, we uh, some couple of um, photograph again. Like there will be a discussion about ladder. So ladder should have proper slope and it should be extended three feet high, you know, at what level the person has to go, you know. So we should not use any short ladders. And then uh, the steel structures, uh, so lifting up steel structure, we should use these ropes uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, control it uh, where we have to place it. Okay. And uh, the, these steel pieces should not hit any person, you know. People should be very careful, you know. People working in in these uh, uh, steel structure, they should be have a safety training related to this job. Again, here putting bearings uh, or under the steel girders, uh, placing these girders, uh, so you know the movement and interaction between girders and person and cranes or buckets. Uh, so we should be very careful to do this uh, this uh, work. So if uh, these like the uh, derrick uh, cranes, you know, we, they are really specially built uh, crane at site. Uh, they need to lift a very long uh, steel uh, uh, structures. Uh, so, um, and the driver uh, is uh, here and then somebody is standing away, should be given instruction to this uh, um, driver to go up and down or right or left. Uh, and then if they are, you know, these uh, rope uh, at, with the hook, so these rope uh, should be strong enough uh, or any, if they are using any chain, uh, so damage chain, we should not use. Uh, and this hook should have a safety clip, a safety clip but that when you insert something, so uh, things will not go out by automatically, you know, unless uh, you do it by your hand, you know. So these uh, um, rigging, like lifting, uh, and steel rope uh, chains uh, and hooks. Okay. So I hope everybody understand. This is uh, like a, a steel rope, and here we have a steel chain, and then there is a hook with the safety clip. Now let's see. The, read. Uh, Safety belt. Okay, when people working at height, uh, um, they, they should have wear a safety harness 
or safety belt. Okay, shall be arranged so that a free fall of not more than six inches will be allowed. Okay, so they should look at the lanyard and look, uh, and no one should fall down on the on the ground. So free fall should be prevented. Uh, stairways. So all the uh, stairways should uh, be uh, at least three feet wide and ten inches. Uh, uh, you know, so that people uh, can put uh, uh, proper feet uh, on the, those stairs. <clears throat> and smoking this is prohibited on the construction site, uh, especially where there is a gasoline station or you know high hazard areas. Similarly, flammables, uh, like uh, flammable liquids, uh, uh, they should be used in uh, stored in approved containers. Um, so, um, um, the flammable uh, transfer, and if there is a, a suitable grounding to prevent the build up of static charges, if there is a, a static charges could happen, so there should be a grounding system should be there. So that the, that current should pass through the soil in the soil. Sanitation toilet facilities should be provided. Uh, OSHA they have uh, standards uh, that uh, for so many people uh, there should be one toilet, uh, and if people are more than fifty, so there should be so many toilets. Are labor force is hundred, so there should be uh, so many toilets. We need to look uh, those OSHA standards and maintain the number of uh, toilet facilities uh, on the site. Drinking water, clean drinking water should be supplied to the people. And this is not a problem in Saudi Arabia because they are given, you know, these uh, uh, mineral bottles. Uh, so if they are using uh, like uh, salt tablets, okay, if they are using like canal water for drinking, so they can use some salt tablets uh, uh, so that uh, the uh, uh, like um, uh, clay particles should settle down, you know, at the bottom, and water should be clean. <clears throat> excavation, okay. So excavation uh, material, other things uh, like uh, excavated material should be uh, placed at least three feet away from the edge of the excavation. Okay? And then these uh, excavation should be a slope of uh, forty-five degree or one vertical to one horizontal. Okay. So this we should uh, uh, maintain uh, this uh, slope uh, for uh, clay soil. But if there is a uh, sandy soil, we have to use uh, those uh, plates and bracing uh, so that uh, excavation should not fall down. Steel structure erection number twenty. Steel structure. You know, whenever like we have seen in the previous speaker, when we are lifting uh, steel members. Uh, so, are uh, making production with uh, with members. So, at least two bolt uh, should be, uh, you know, uh, fastened properly, and through the hole uh, uh, with the net uh, and bolt. Okay. So, no load sh shall be placed on the until permanent bolting is complete. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, only people uh, having uh, experience of working. Uh, in the steel structure work, they should be permitted to to work in the steel structure, and not a new workers. Okay, what is number twenty-one? Is ladders. Okay, ladders. Use of ladders. Ladders shall be provided to give access to floors, stacking, or platforms. Ladders shall be maintained in a safe condition at all times. Ladders should securely fastened top and bottom as well as the brace uh, where required. Ladders leading to floor, roofs, uh, or platforms shall extend at least three feet above the level of such floors. Okay, so it, we should not use any short ladders. So we have seen the figure before. Scaffolding. So scaffolding should be strong enough, uh, and it should uh, transport at least four times the anticipated working loads. Okay. So, planks overhanging uh, uh, and supports not less than six inches uh, or more than 12 inches. You know, when we use uh, like these um, planks, wooden, wooden planks for uh, where worker can stand, so they should be uh, like uh, six inches uh, overhanging. 
but not more than 12 otherwise it will become cantilever and sometimes people uh, labor go at the edge and these planks are lifted you know, and labor fall down so we have to avoid these things okay so let's use the uh, again for scaffolding we should use some guard rails uh, at the top where uh, with the working platform or uh, there is a you know, at the bottom as base plate should be there then 23 regain rope and chain okay this also we have seen in the previous figure that uh, those uh, rope uh, should be sufficient strength uh, okay they, so they should not be like any damaged uh, rope uh, those are like those ropes are wire rope you know we call them wire rope because it's a twisted wires uh, uh, so for hosting uh, that uh, loads uh, so no rope shall be used in, um, with visual inspection, like they have a collision or misuse or damage rope should not be used. So hooks, uh, they should have a safety clip. Loads that tend to swing or turn during hosting shall be controlled by a tagline, a tagline or rope, uh, like when they are lifting uh, steel girders or steel uh, members. Uh, so the, that should be uh, from the edges uh, there should be a tagline you know so 23 24 okay welding and cutting so the welding and cutting the people should wear uh, you know uh, goggles uh, when uh, or uh, here they are going to mention about oxygen cylinders okay oxygen cylinder when they are lifted uh, like this uh, gas cylinders so they should be lifted in a cradle you know from the bottom not uh, no one should lift those cylinder from the nozzle of the gas okay because uh, that if no that nozzle is uh, um, taken away so uh, or get damaged uh, so the leakage can happen you know, and there could be a fire you know. so then what is uh, <clears throat> Uh, cranes and derricks. We have seen this also. Cranes and derricks. Uh, these are specialized uh, cranes, you know, for, for lifting up for heavy steel work. Uh, so the person giving signals, uh, he should be standing away from uh, and the driver and visible to the driver and, and giving uh, instruction that go up, down, left, right. Uh, okay. Uh, so for lifting those uh, steel uh, structures. So he should be having a uh, giving signals and there should be like a crane and uh, there will be fire extinguisher that should be attached with these cranes uh, if there is uh, some fire. Trucks, uh, we use a lot of trucks on construction site uh, for dump trucks, uh, you know, for loading, uh, unloading materials, uh, um, maybe soil or other materials. So only people having a proper driving license, they should uh, operate uh, all these trucks. Uh, and when they are going to like backward, uh, so they should um, there should be a beep or alarm. Uh, and so we should be careful. So guys, here you see 26 point, they have listed uh, like uh, uh, small, small things about the, from the OSHA standards, uh, like uh, job safety rules and regulation. Uh, this is like an example, so example they have given. So we should uh, for detail, should uh, cover uh, from the OSHA standards. Uh, even we offer uh, next time, inshallah, if uh, uh, Allah will, um, God will, inshallah, we, maybe I will offer the course online about uh, safety in construction. You know? So, in that course, we will have enough time to cover all these uh, OSHA rules and regulations. What is inside subpart A, what is inside subpart B, or C, up to subpart D. So we can present in the presentation form and uh, in a more attractive way. But here, because there is just one chapter, so I I try to put the whatever is given in the in the book. So uh, last point, we are uh, talking about uh, there should be safety meetings, uh, weekly safety meetings, or at least uh, 15 days. Safety engineers, safety supervisors, they should participate uh, even including subcontractors, but at least there should be a meeting at once, uh, at least uh, one time in a month uh, with the participation of uh, supervisors and key workers. You know? So worker may be uh, included in the meeting on rotation, 
this time some worker and sometimes some other worker in rotation should participate in these safety meetings there is a figure given 20.8 so we will present this figure in the next slide and worker they should have uh, we have discussed this uh, in the last uh, um, lecture that uh, there should be toolbox talk you know before starting the work uh, so the um, foreman or a supervisor they can share their experience past experience uh, and see talk about how they will do this today's work in a safe way you know so what are the expected hazards inside or incident can happen so they can give briefing, short briefing before starting the work in the morning. So in the safety meeting here, they put, uh, you know, every safety meeting, uh, you know, every company, they have their own format of um, preparing minutes of meeting. Like here they put, there is a safety supervisor, their name is given, you know, like C, or okay, A, Apple, duck m d halpen okay these are the name so safety supervisor is there carpenter foreman surveyor laborer field engineer and tool room person is there so they are there are some people from the subcontractor side and they have this meeting from 15 august to 31st august after 15 days so there was seven cases of first aid okay, they recorded but there was no case of doctor case or lost time injury okay so in, in these safety meetings, uh, you can discuss, uh, uh, you know, safety rules and regulation or distribute some safety material or document uh, in the minutes of meeting, some safety related uh, materials, uh, safe, safety related uh, standards, uh, SOPs. Uh, so make discussion uh, whatever is important uh, in the next uh, coming week. Uh, so let the people understand about uh, those uh, safety rules and regulation. Uh, and make a pressure with the, with the workers uh, that they have to do in the coming week so, or make a statement uh, what has happened in the past how people are implementing safety rules and regulations okay. so this safety uh, every company they can have their own format uh, for having minutes of meeting uh, for the safety meetings and then this should be signed by the uh, like the safety manager or the in charge of the safety meeting so with this, we have uh, finished this uh, chapter uh, uh, about uh, construction safety. Um, I hope uh, within these two lectures, you have learned uh, a lot. And inshallah, if you uh, watch these uh, videos uh, at least one or two times, so you should be able to perform your work uh, on your construction site in a safe way and try to provide a safe working condition for the workforce. Uh, Inshallah, if we have a chance to, to offer a separate course on uh, uh, you know, safety and construction, so then in that course, we will have a lot of um, things we can present uh, um, like this. Uh, about, uh, we have covered 20 chapters, uh, so there is one chapter left for this course. Inshallah, we will cover also and uh, we will complete this course. So with this, thank you very much for your attention. Inshallah, allow me to say the kafara madras subhanakallah ma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik thank you very much for your attention and see you next time so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh